in this video we'll discuss the essential requirements of data recognition of financial assets and financial liabilities. So let's resolve this matter before it gets complicated. And to do that, we'll need to start a discussion with the concept of transfer. Say entity A owes entity B $1,000 plus interest in one year time, but entity B wants to release cash from the assets now. Contractually, entity B cannot force entity A to repay the principal and accrued interest before the stipulated term. In this case, what an entity B can do is find some other entity, say entity C, that will pay entity B an amount upfront and will obtain the right to receive all contractual cash flows from entity A. So in essence, entity B is simply receiving cash flows from entity A on behalf of entity C. Nothing has changed in the financial liability of entity A and entity C now has a new financial asset. But what about entity B? Should entity B recognize the financial asset? Because its right to receive contractual cash flows from A has been given up in substance in favor of entity C on receipt of a consideration or should it keep the financial asset in its own books and book a financial liability in entity C's favor because contractually the right to receive cash flows from entity A still exists in form. The short and sweet answer is it depends. Uh, practically uh, transfer of financial assets happen all the time especially in the financial sector. Uh, it may be in the form of debt factoring, it may be in the form of securitization of loan portfolios. So what exactly is IFRS 9 saying about such transfers and overall about the derecognition of financial assets? According to IFRS 9, an entity shall derecognize a financial asset if any of the following happens. If the contractual rights to cash flows from the financial instrument expire or if the entity transferred the financial asset and the transfer qualifies for derecognition. So we have just had a look at what the transfer really means but does it qualify for derecognition is still to be understood. Now this transfer can happen in two ways. One is what we just discussed in our example of entity B. That is where the entity B actually retained the right to receive contractual cash flows from entity A and assumed a contractual obligation to pay cash flows to entity C. Let's call this mode of transfer type X transfer for ease of reference. Another way an asset could be transferred could be if the entity B no longer retains the right to receive cash flows to pay to entity C. This could be as simple as selling a corporate bond issued by entity A to entity C. And let's call this the mode of transfer type Y transfer. So we have two kinds of transfers. One is indirect transfer, which we are going to refer as type X transfer, and the direct transfer, which we are going to refer to as type Y transfer. Now for type X transfer, that is an indirect case, the following conditions must be true for such transfer to be considered a derecognition. Firstly, the entity must have no obligation to pay amounts to eventual recipient unless it collects equivalent amounts from original asset, which means there should not be a guarantee to pay some, any amount on its own. The entity must be prohibited by the terms of the transfer contract from selling or pledging the original asset other than as security to the eventual recipient. Which means any security it holds should be essentially belonging to the uh, eventual recipient. The entity must be obliged to pay any cash flow it receives from the asset to the eventual recipient without any material delay. And finally, the entity must be prohibited to invest such cash flows except for investment in cash and cash equivalents. And even in that case, any profit received from that investment should be remitted to the eventual recipient. Additionally, both type X and type Y transfer would be considered derecognition only if the entity transfers substantially all the risks and rewards of ownership to the final entity. But if all the risks and rewards of the ownership have not been transferred, the transfer can still be considered, considered a derecognition if both of the following conditions are fulfilled. First, the entity has not even retained all the risks and rewards of the ownership of the financial asset. And the entity has not retained control of the financial asset. Finally, in case of a type X transfer, the indirect transfer where the entity would essentially be playing as a middleman, where it would be receiving cash flows from entity A 
from one entity and paying the cash flows to another entity and therefore in place of the financial asset a service asset will be recognized and a service liability will also be recognized in favor of the eventual recipient because the amounts are both receivable and payable now let's talk about the derecognition of financial liabilities and thankfully the derecognition of liabilities is relatively simpler an entity shall derecognize a financial liability only if the obligation is extinguished and by extinguished we mean if the obligation is discharged, cancelled or expires. Now there are two special cases which we should keep in our mind. If a lender returns a debt instrument issued by the borrower and in exchange the borrower issues a new debt instrument with substantially different terms, such exchange shall be accounted for as extinguishment of the original liability and recognition of a new financial liability. Similarly, if the terms of an existing financial liability or part of it are substantially modified, then such modification shall be accounted for as an extinguishment of the original liability and recognition of a new financial liability.